Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be interviewing Federica, who is a second year student now, or are you? Yeah. Yeah, a second year student in Unicamelis, which is a university here in Rome. This is going to be the first part of the interview where we're going to ask her about the university, how the timetables and exams work. And in the second part, we're going to ask a bit more about her personal experience and city life. So with that being said, let's get started straight away. Um, Federica, could you tell me a little bit about how the exams in your university work? So hello, everybody, first of all, and secondly, Let's dive into the exams. So um, we are kind of divided into like separate ways. So normally without COVID, they will always all of them be like written and oral. So the oral, it's not like mandatory only to hire your mark, but it's like written and oral for all the exam. Normally the written is just like a multiple choice question, except for exams like biochemistry, chemistry, in which you have to do like exercise and stuff like that. But normally it would be something like that. And then at the oral exam, you will like explain, have more time to like dive into topics and that's how it works. And on like timing for the exam, we have multiple sessions during the year. So normally you will start having lessons like in October and the first session will be in February. Then we will have like uh, an extraordinary session in April. Then the ordinary session in June, July and September. And then another extraordinary session in December. So basically the all year is covered. So you can just try and do all the exam you want. Um, and for the exams, do you do like subjects? Like you do one exam for anatomy, one exam for biochemistry, or is it kind of like more a systems based? Um, how does that work? No, it's not system based, it's subject based. So basically, uh, we will have like exams that are divided in modules. So, for example, microbiology, has, it has four modules. So, it will have parasitology, virology, bacteriology and mycology and you will have like multiple exams in order to pass you have to done, do them all and others are like divided into big exam for example for anatomy we have the first one which is like um correlated to anatomy one is skeletal muscle system um circulatory system so some of the system and the second one is more splanchnology and uh, neuroanatomy but those are big exams so they just divide it into parts and once you pass one you've done it so you just you don't have to do, do both of them in order to pass the whole exam okay that's that's uh that's pretty cool so you kind of mentioned a little bit about like how the academic calendar is you know like with exams in february june july so could you give a brief overview of like the academic calendar so like when are your holidays but also what does your daily schedule look like like when do you start the day when do you end it you know all of the all of the good stuff yes <laughs> So first of all, I would like to like explain the academic year. So normally it's the same for uh, from second year to the fifth, sixth year, even though we do not have fourth, fifth and sixth year because we are at just a new university. So the most advanced year is the third one. But we started in like October. Then we will go on with the lessons uh, through like Christmas because we just do holidays in Christmas, but we end the first semester at the end of uh, January. Then we will have the exams. And then at the end of February or like the first days of March, we will start the second semester, which will last till last, um, last May, yes, at the end of May. But we will have the Easter like break, which um, is, depending on when Easter is and we will have like two to three weeks and of course we will have the extraordinary session of the exam which I was talking about before and then when we finish the second semester in May we will have like June, July, August and most like all September which is free from lesson but we have a lot of exam and I think that the only month in which we do not have exams or lessons will be August and the daily schedule of course depends on the year you're on because for example the first year it's different because due to the test you start later you have like a little bit of swipe timetable 
towards the end of the year, but for the, all the others, it's the same. And the lessons normally starts at eight and will end like at five o'clock. And you have, of course, like a break in the middle of the day to eat something because of course your brain needs to work <laughs> so, like um, at 1 p.m. But due to COVID and due to the fact that now uh, we are online, we uh, have a different schedule based on like we can start like an, one hour before or one hour later. So it's normally this amount of hours, but they can switch the time. Of course, they, they tell you when you have like the lesson or not. And also we have like breaks in between the lessons, of course, like the first two hours and then the break, then two hours and the break. So it's something like this. Um, those hours seem crazy, like 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. That is really intense because we usually are like 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Is there, is there like a particular reason why you guys have such long classes? Like, do you have a really intense like preclinical time or... Well, I think that the clinical part is like the most time consuming, like you have a lot of lesson, but I also think that those are made in order to like help you, like go deep into topics. Like we have also a lot of laboratories, even if we are like online. So maybe using like um, histology, for example, slides, or maybe skull for the anatomy. So stuff like that. And so that's, why maybe these hours are so long. So it's not only frontal lesson, it's also like test try with anatomy or with other like subjects, maybe exercise with chemistry. So I think that's why it's so long a day. But at the end of the day, if you follow the lesson, I think you just can review what you do and you're fine for the exams, I think. Cool. So um, I know that you guys don't really have like upper years, so there you, you don't have like may maybe you do. I don't know. But like one of the most asked questions is like, what is the cl clinical experience like? So do have you start? I know, also, I know in COVID times, it's very, very hard to assess what would have been clinical experience. But do you have like any idea or information about what it would look like or how they want it to look like post pandemic? OK, yes, I have kind of uh, a planning on how it should be. Um, and I'm talking only for medicine. I just want to underline it because now from this year, we also have dentistry, but I know it's different. And we also have health professions, but it's different because, of course, due to the fact that they are only three years, they are already doing something. But I do not want to like speak for them because I don't know what they're going to do, but for medicine, uh, we start like clinical practice, like really in the hospital from the fourth year. So I think that most of the university starts from third or fourth, but I think that the amount of hour, it's the same for everybody, I think. So it's just when you do those hours and we do them from fourth year. And I think that in our six years, we do not have like a lot of the exams, but it will be mostly like preparing your thesis and doing a lot of training. So I think that the most wonderful part of it will be like the six year, just if you can reach up to there. <laughs> but then like for the first years, and of course in a situation when COVID, it's not here, uh, we will have like a lot, a lot of laboratories, like the histology lab, like you put on your code and you're like, I'm almost a doctor, even though I'm in my first year, we have the suture like uh, practice. So not on the other students, of course, but on fake skin, let's say. And uh, also with the, the anatomy, we have a lab anatomy, but uh, of course, these are all experience that we are now not experiencing due to COVID, but I have to say that they are providing us for, with something else. Like uh, what can be done online, it's done online. They are giving us access to a lot of uh, online resources, which are really, really pricey, but they just give us because we are students. So I'm like, yay, it's amazing. <laughs> so stuff like that. But for the future, I know that we will be like in different hospitals because we do not have like only one in Rome, of course. And that's the only thing I know regarding the, the practice. 
Okay, I mean, that's that's really, really awesome that the fact that they're giving you guys so much and you've already started like suttering because I think we've only officially meant to be starting that this year, um, doing it on models. And yeah, that's that's really, really incredible that even in like, you, you know, because I've talked to a lot of students in uh, other universities and a lot of them have basically said that their university kind of really let them down in pandemic times with the things. And I remember the last time we talked, you were saying that your university actually built a special platform for you guys to yeah. continue your classes. And like, so you you have a completely, yeah, could you uh, just talk a little bit about that? Because I think that that's so incredible that your uni did that for you, along with all of the resources. Because I know that a lot of other students, and I think most of the university uses like outer sources, like, I don't know, if I can say that, like Zoom or uh, Teams and stuff like that. But our university provided us like a personal, we call it web app. <laughs> so it's an app that only works on the web. Not to, you can use it also on your phone while through like browsers. And what it does is basically like the university on the PC because we have like the secretary chat, we can talk with them. We can like, um, of course, uh, find all the documents we need, but also all the slides of the professors. All we can chat with the professor. Actually, we can just like chat the chat. And there, the the other thing which I think it's amazing, and I think we are the only one who have this. It's the fact that we do not have to show us like we do not have to use cameras. So I think it's amazing. And I think they did this because we can like re-watch re the lessons because half, like mostly half of the students are foreign students. So if the professor said, okay, the lesson is at eight o'clock and maybe someone lives, I don't know, in a totally different place of the world, maybe for them it's like 3 a.m. in the morning. And so they can watch the lesson later. They can also interact with the prof and he will receive questions like from the minutes of the lesson, you can like watch and see which is the problem and answer. So I think it's really good. And from that, we can also do like the, I don't know if they required, for example, to bear cooling test in order to enter the, the hospital or maybe some medical stuff correlated to the training. They advise you from that and you can like book your uh, medical stuff <laughs> from it. And there are a lot of other things like, for example, the um, for the students like representative like election. So we do it from there. And we also have the, um, the possibility to go to the resources they gave us like Ovid, I don't know, or Atlas of Medicine, like a lot of stuff like that. And it's, re it's really good, really, really good. Yeah, that, that sounds really, really, really incredible, especially something as simple as booking your test before you go into the hospital. Because like for us, we have certain number of vaccinations and we have to get like the Mantu test and stuff done. But no one knows how to go about it. There's like no clear instructions. Like on the website, it's kind of half in Italian, half in English, but it's not even telling you how to do it. It's just like inform like it, it's an absolute mess. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's really, really amazing. Um, OK. Does your university do cadaver dissections? Okay, um, for as far as I know, no. But they provided us our resources in which we have like cadaver lab experiences on video. So we can choose like a topic from anatomy. I don't know, maybe for example, neuroanatomy, and we can watch like uh, an anatomy lab a person that explains stuff like that. And it's of course on video, but as far as I know, this is not something that even without COVID we are like allowed to do. I don't know, <laughs> but maybe they, they are trying to, to do this, but for now, no. Okay. I mean, I just, I, th I always ask this question because some people believe that certain universities do cadaver dissections. And I just really want to dispel this uh, myth that n none of Italy does dissections most countries in the world are moving away from them so yeah but it's nice that you have the videos we were given we we were shown videos more so but um so the tough the tough talk now your university <laughs> is clearly absolutely incredible the resources they provide and the amount of care that they put in is comes <laughs> comes a lot from 
they're very, very uh, high budget because it's kind of a private university, right? So could we talk a little bit about the tuition fees and then after the tuition fees, talk a bit more about like the scholarship options because clearly it's an amazing school, but I can only imagine how expensive it is. So yeah. <laughs> it is a lot <laughs> expensive. Okay, so um, I think that we have to make like a difference between like uh, EU students and non-EU students because for the EU students I think it's easier the process for uh, all the fees and also the scholarships just because they are from uh, EU but also the non-EU students can find like everything on the side of Unicamillus and I think that they have just a uh, like a normal pricing for all of them but for the uh, EU students uh, we can like receive in different like range of price depending on your income depending on stuff like that we call it easy in Italy and you have basically to tell the, the, the banks and the states like this is what my income this is what I get this is what I have and from that they tell you like okay you can pay this you can pay that and i know that for public universities it's like okay you have a really low income and basically for you it's free you just have to pay the first tax like the um, enrollment for every year but then it's free um i think that for private university and of course for unica Millos, even if you have a really really low income uh it's not completely free but you like pay a lot a lot more uh, I can't dive into it because, uh, unfortunately, I have like, like you have three euros more than like the, the rent, so you have to pay a lot. So I'm like, okay, I pay a lot. <laughs> and we have basically have the normal uh, price for the whole year. It's 20K. 20. So 20,000. 20, 20,000 20, euros. 20,000 euro a year with no reductions and mm -hmm. what if okay no scholarship but maximum income reduction what would be that like would it be like 15,000 16,000 there are different ranges and I think they will be like from because it's really personal so it will be like the last range is based maybe from 18,000 to 20,000 okay. then we have like 16 to 18 um, and I think that the least you can pay is 10,000, I okay. think. Oh, no, that's because a big difference. Like, it's, like you have to provide these uh, through like like offices and then the university check if you are saying the truth and then they do everything, they contact you and you have like to, to pay and stuff. But of course we have the possibility to di divide like uh, the, the amount and we have different periods in which we can pay. And I think that's good because I know that other universities, like private universities, say maybe they have like a lower price, but maybe 15,000, so not that lower price. Yeah. And they say, okay, you have to pay it all now. Thank you. But <laughs> we can like divide it. And I think it's it's helpful. Like, yeah, for sure. It's and for scholarship, um, they um, put like every year it's different. So it's not like something that you can apply for every year and that's a standard, but it's different because it is related for from the collaboration they do like with banks, with uh, assurance. And so basically you have to try and apply and they are two types. So you have the one because you are a really, really great student. But I think that that one, it's like from the second year like they have to know that you are a good student so you have to do some exams and the or maybe from the first year and you have to promise that you're going to be a great student so at the end of the year they check and if you do not have like the requirements they just take you away the scholarship and the other one is like i'm not that good of a student but i'm not that like not having that income so i need help <laughs> so basically with banks you can do that and i know but i'm not sure about it because it's always due to covid is something we will have this something correlated to student loan so i know that they are moving towards this direction also in italy for private university but it's like a really 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 question mark for it 
Okay. But you so... can do the information on the site because it's really personal and correlated to every different student. So it's yeah. not something like it is for everybody. So it's like really customizable. So yeah, I'll, I'll I'll make sure I link the website in the description. But I also know that like on the website that we have, I do remember going to the Unicamless website, which is really nice, by the way. It's so much nicer than our university's one. And there is like a lot of information um, on both of them. So the other question I want to ask is, does the university have accommodation? Like, does it offer accommodation at that price? Or like, what is your general opinion of it? Um. <laughs> So, yes, we have a campus and I know that a lot of students uh, like live there because I know it's really, really good. Like it's all brand new. Uh, you can like, of course, uh, stay there and you can choose if you want like to live in, uh, in a single uh, like room or double or even an apartment. Like you can have your own apartment. They provide everything, like even like hands and place, everything. But uh, the only thing is that I think it's always booked. Like you, you, you maybe can try to book for year fourth when you're in first. I don't know how it works. Wow. Because okay. I, I didn't even ever, ever, ever try to apply because I always find it like okay, it's it's overbooking. Okay. Yay. And I unfortunately I do not have a lot of experience with that. Also because due to COVID, I like never done a lesson over there maybe just two lessons at university and then everything online but i just want to mention that they are giving us the possibility to choose what we want to do like if we want to go on site or to do it online so just that's just one, something i wanted to say because i'm just saying online 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 but it's also on site for those who want it and regarding the accommodation uh i think that you can't like enter in the middle of the year i think it's one time like at the beginning of the year you can choose if you want to live there and i think that it's really really good for like maybe foreign students because maybe since the university is not like so central in rome it's more like on the outside of rome like in tivoli <laughs> which is a near room. Um, I think that they also help you with the transportation, like with that. So for maybe for a student or maybe a student that do not own a car, I think it's really, really good to check the, the campus of the university. Yeah, I'm just going to show it on the map now in case people are uh, interested Perfect. in uh, seeing it. Regarding the price, it depends on what you choose, even in here. Like if you have a single room, a double room, or your own apartment. So. It's, yeah, I think it's like similar to what you will pay in center room to have like a room. So I yeah, so this is this is a uh, quite outside of Rome. I'm just showing the map. I just want to make sure that my uh, my house doesn't come up when I actually show it. But yeah, I I can tell you that it's it's quite far. Um, if we're looking at if we're looking at Rome, like the outside, this red dot is here, and city center is basically like the collection, this is where Sapienza is. So yeah, yeah, okay, it's 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 pretty far. Um, but it's a beautiful campus though, with lots of modern and amazing things. Yeah, super run, it's super beautiful. Really, really, really like it a lot. Yeah. And do you have any idea what the price is like roughly monthly for the accommodation? Uh, I think it can go from five hundred to even a thousand. I don't okay. know because I think it's really correlated to your choose like if you choose a single double or apartment I think that the most like the least expensive will be like a double room yeah then you will have a single and then you have your own apartment which of course uh, will be yeah. like higher pricing I mean yeah. that is that is pretty expensive because especially like that far out in Rome if you just went and rented a private apartment, you could probably find a really, really nice one for 200, 300 euro a month, I think. Like if you're that outside of Rome. No, because, so, so, like, because like, I, I like have, around okay. it and, uh, it's, it's not like so easy to find like a cute place over there because like in the city center, you can find like really beautiful places, but they are like, yeah, yeah. so, so. <laughs> and you end up like paying even five or six hundred for a room yeah but 
in the like near Unicamillos, you can find at five, six hundred your own apartment, but it will not be like so, so beautiful. Yeah. But for two, two thirty, three hundred, I think you can try to find a room. I think you can yeah. try. I mean, I have. I have friends who live out by Tor Vergata, which is also pretty far outside of Rome, and they rent like a private room for like 300 euro a month. And like, obviously it's it's not super nice, like maybe not everything is provided for you and it's not super modern, but like it's a private room for 300 euro. Like you can hardly complain uh, about it being so cheap, but. Yes, I, I know that there are some areas of Rome which are like better, to yeah. find a, a super offers for houses and for housing. Um, and I just want to, to say that the area near Yuri Camilla is not like the best area of Rome, but like it's super cool. Like yeah. you can just reach the city center in 20 minutes. So I think that most of the students who do not live in the campus basically choose to stay more like closer to the, to the city center so they can just like hang out in the city and they can also like arrive in time to the lessons. Yeah. <laughs> Midway, because like Piazza Bologna or maybe near the Policlinico, I think that's a really good area. To it's find, a student like, area. Like basically around Sapienza has really, really great student areas where most of the student life is. So it is kind of like a balance, I guess. But um, kind of like speaking of the campus and I know you know again pandemic times but um do you know anything about like the sporting facilities or the canteen facilities like what are the university facilities like non-teaching facilities basically okay uh I I don't know what they have I know that we have like library and like places to study and I also know that we have like an organization to party, like to, to do something like with all the students, which um, they can organize like parties and nights with the students and stuff like that. But regarding sport, I don't know if we have something, I guess they have like a place in which they can like do something maybe outside or maybe something inside with a little bit of like gym. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it. But uh, one thing uh, I know that we have like a, a basketball team. Like I don't know if it's just a sponsorship of Unica Millos for this um, for this basketball team. But I know that they are posting like, "Hey, this is our basketball team! Yay!" So I know that they are planning on do something like the students not only study they also have like a life <laughs> and they need to be healthy so i know that they are like trying to become better and to add anything like they can and they are even like building a whole another like structure in which we will have lessons so i know they are like implementing stuff uh, so just one last question before we end the university portion of it uh, you talked a little bit about like uh, what, like usually I ask about the teaching facilities and things, but like it's very clear that they have excellent teaching facilities. But how would you describe like your professors, uh, like the quality of the general professors and the other part is like, what is your class like? Like how many people are you? How does that affect your uh, relationship with the professors? What is your division? Are you collaborative? Are people more like closed with their resources? Um, so I know that's a really, really big question, but I think you talk really, really well. So it's nice to ask open-ended questions. So, okay. So I think that the professors are like really, 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 really different from like every one of them, because we have like a lot of well-known professors and well, because they do not only do like their academic activity they are also doing their work outside the academic world and i really like this because even when they are like explaining stuff during the lessons they are really like uh, medical based like i know this and i want to explain it to you because i do this every day. so like that's a thing i like a lot and they are all from different age like we have i i don't know if you know but i am 20 27 years old 
And I started later medicine and I have some professor that are just three years older than me. And I think it's really, really cool like to have some like smart and super active professors that are like, we can do this, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, woo. So it's, it's super cool, but we also have like other ones that are like really into the a scientific world. I don't know, but we have like the molecular biology professor, which is the one that discovered the COVID at the Spallanzani with the first two cases of I don't know. Oh, you know, yes, I we had this conversation the last time as well. Yeah. Was it like the structure or something? This was like a year ago when it was brand new that yeah. you, your university uncovered the structure of COVID. It was like the first one to do it in the world or something like that, was it? I don't think it's like my university, like one, one professor at my university and these, this was the molecular biology. Oh, which yes, is, sorry. Uh, Bianchi, professor Capo Bianchi. And we also have the statistic professor, which was correlated to the studies for COVID. So they are really into what they are explaining. So that's the thing I like a lot. And we also have like the only complaint I can do is regarding the English, because uh, this is an international university and I would like to have also some international like professors. Um, this is just something I will like. I know that they can say like, okay, these are the professor <laughs> you have and enjoy. But I would like to add it because we also do some uh, extracurricular experiences, for example, seminars. And we have their professors that are not Italian and that can like create this multicultural world that Unicamillos is so proud of because we have like students from all over the world. So I will also like to have professors from all over the world or for now, the, the younger like professors uh, have experience like outside Italy. So I, that's something I also like because they can also help with students who wants to go abroad. So they can be like, hey, I studied this in Cambridge. So if you want to go there, you will study this and blah, blah, blah. So I think it's great. So this is the whole stuff. And of course, it's not only like super good professor. There are also some professors that are like, hmm. But I think it's normal, like we are humans, uh, it, it's normal to have it's, some that are It's definitely and pretty normal. Like I know that every university has some good professors and some bad professors, some passionate professors and some that really don't want to be there. I just, uh, I think it's really interesting and I raised this the last time as well, that I never thought that for an international course that I would have international professors. Like when I arrived at Sapienza, I fully expected all of my professors to be Italian and they just speak English. So it's really interesting that you would like to have international professors because you're an international course. Yes, because I know that for IMAT actually, it's like the Italian university with a course in English. Yes. So that's, but Unica Milos, it's international university, oh. but in English. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, it does. I never thought of it that way. You're so right. Yeah, because at IMAT, basically, there are normally the, the bando. I don't know how to say it in English. The call it's to applicants. Open. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, it's open to everybody. But normally, it works like this. An Italian student try to do the public test in Italian. And to have like another opportunity, it also do like the IMAT test, which is medicine in Italy, in English, and then like the private university. But when I like read uh, the stuff about Jimmy Camillo's, the first thing that popped up in my mind was like, ooh, this is international, yay. But actually for now, it's like Italian professors that taught medicine, uh, teach medicine in English. But I would like to, to like implement it <laughs> because I would like it a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a really interesting thing that I didn't consider. Okay, and sorry, it was a really long. I I interrupted you, but what about like your class size, the diversity, oh, yeah. and teamwork between them? Yeah, so uh, the classes are like big because like I I can't like tell you with my experience because I've never experienced like uh, a full week of university to enjoy like other people and other students. But I went there just to uh, do some um, like a recovery lesson because I entered later, stuff like that. So the normal, like in our group chat of uh, WhatsApp, we have like from 200, 250 for the second year. But I know that in the first year now, 
they are even more they are like 300 students and that's why they have like uh, they are like building another structure in order to have like more students coming in and i think they are managing this like well because they have like different professors so uh, the professor are, are not rushing like I, I have to finish because i have to do this blah blah blah. like the first year professors second year some professors third year some professors so i think it's that is good and the other thing is that we they they want us to collaborate with students and with professors so i think that in the first year they were like a little bit disorientated with all the COVID stuff but they let us do something like team project uh, for moral philosophy because in the first year we we did something like ethics bioethics uh, and also moral philosophy but from the second year we are doing this stuff like as homeworks like every week we are like engaging with other students with the professors and they answer the emails i'm like wow <laughs> amazing <laughs> because they they like want to do stuff so they are really like encouraging students to to try and do like even to, to test their knowledge and they are really welcoming like don't worry if you make mistakes it's during the lessons so try and do this homework send it to me or we also did like powerpoints and i think it's it's, it's really good like i i did a powerpoint on a dysfunction of the cranial nerve with a friend that lived in israel and like we 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 talked a lot we spent a lot of time doing this we did it we sent it to the professor the professor especially wrote back to us not something during the lesson like okay guys it's good for everybody like for every student she answered like hey this is good this is fine blah 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 so super cool this stuff um so okay just I know I said that was going to be my final question but I guess it makes more sense that we uh included it in this part because your applicate it's not through the IMAT, right? Like when you want to apply and qualify, it's not done through the IMAT. So could you give like a brief overview of if someone is watching this and they want to go to Unicamulus, like what is the process? Um, okay. So, um, the process, of course, it's not like IMAT. So what you have to do is that first of all, like before everything, try to have all the documents like your a high school diploma, or if you have like another degree, your degree, um, stuff like that. All your documents like uh, valid <laughs> with dates, not expired, something like that. And with that, you can start, you can go to the site of Unica Middles, And the first thing that will pop up will be like the enrollment situation. So, hey, there is some places for medicine. Want to join? Yes. And so <laughs> you can check it. And normally what they do is that they have a test, like an official test in September after all the other tests uh, are um, taken. Because a lot of students try to do like public tests, they can't enter. And so they have another possibility in order not to like have to wait another year. So they do it like with a little bit of delay comparing to the other tests. So you can try to do that. And of course, the enrollment is a lot, a lot, a lot easier than IMAT. Like IMAT, you have to like check the site in June, then the test is in September, then you have to wait for the ranking list in October, then the enrollment and stuff like that. But for Yuri Camelus, normally you will like uh, enroll, like even with three days before the test. So even if you're rushing, like, yay, it's, but check it because the dates are really, really explained well in the site. And you do the test and three days later, you know if you're in or not. So I think it's so good. And this is also because you can enroll like, I'm not saying in a week, but five, maybe five days after you uh, are ranked in a list, like, okay, you can enroll and you have five days. So you have to be prepared to pay. Like I want to enroll and I have to pay like today because That's that's still amazing, though, that literally three days after you do the test, you find out because with the IMAT, you have to wait two weeks and then you might have to do scrolling. And in the meantime, like if you like if you apply to another private university, you have to decide if you're going to. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. And I just want to underline it that they also do a test in like um, February. So they did. I don't know if it was like end of February, but let's say in February. 
and they give you the possibility to enter even if you are still in high school and you want to like secure your place in medicine you can do the test in february and then you enroll and you have to pay and then you will start in october but if by the way you decide that you do not want to go further with the Camillus and you choose another university it's not refundable like when you paid it's done the only thing you can do i guess it's to do an, another test and try to transfer so across universities but it's really complicated i think we have to do like another stuff only yeah on yeah that. yeah for sure there, there's a trans. everyone's been asking for a transfer article and i have it like kind of written but yeah that, that will definitely be discovered in um another video but yeah i i just realized the time but this was really 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 great like it was so informative and to the point and yeah i'm i think i'm going to end the first part here i just okay. want to thank you at the end of the first part and then i'll thank you again in the second part but yeah thank you so much for all the information i'm i think unicam sounds really really great because usually the concern is it's a brand new university and it's private, but like from everything that you've been describing and from the pictures I saw and the research I did for the articles, like it really seems like an excellent university. Yeah, like for, for everybody, we have ups and downs and a lot of things can be like implemented and they can be better. But with all the things that have just already started, uh, it's something that can only become better. Like there is this complaint and they, they, they also listen to what they tell them, like we do not want this. Why? Because of this and that. And so they try to do better every time. So I think it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I guess uh, say bye and I'll end the recording. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye.